By now, we all know how the stories go. We've negotiated the tenebrous hallways of the mall. We've navigated the precariously perched nest, and we've powered through the pale city. We know the games, we know the characters, and we know the narrative, mostly. The Nowhere contains a great many unsolved mysteries and untold stories. Throughout Little Nightmares 2, we can find whispers of a game that never was, and hints that at some stage during the development process, there was a lot more planned for this title than we got in the final production. So in this series, we will explore some of the tales that were not told, and consider exactly how they could have played out. So I present to you, Little Ones, the DLC that never was. And we'll start with Chapter 1, The School. But first, the obligatory spoiler warning. This video will contain spoilers for Little Nightmares 1, Little Nightmares 2, Very Little Nightmares, and the Little Nightmares 2 electronic comics. Now, let's begin with a general overview. As this is largely speculation, there are going to be some entirely fabricated ideas within this script, but I will of course do my best to incorporate elements of existing lore to tie the whole idea together. So with that being said, let's take a look at our protagonist, the Lollipop Boy, who I may refer to as LB just for convenience moving forwards. Some of you may also know this character as the Fat Kid. But in the interest of not being hurtful, I'll be sticking with the prior. LB's canonicity within the world of Little Nightmares is actually fairly concrete, given that he appeared in the Little Nightmares 2 electronic comics, his portraits can be found in the game, and he has an existing character model in the game files labelled Child 1. So we have our first DLC character, and given what's already firmly established about this portly little chap, we can quite readily expect to find him in the school. So I think it's reasonable to have him begin his endeavour in the playground. No, not this playground. This playground. Because although there is a broken tricycle here, there is no grass. Meaning that if it is in fact the same tricycle, it must have been moved here later. And we know this DLC will have to take place before Mono and Six arrive, for reasons I'll get to shortly. So, the music block where Mono and Six escape from is rendered inaccessible from this side. So that's not where our adventure will begin. No, I believe that the majority of LB's campaign will take place in the parts of the school that we didn't get to see. Much like the runaway kid in Little Nightmares 1. As Mono and Six, we climbed in through and explored the majority of the school's main building and east wing, leaving some of the parts of the school completely undiscovered. Moving through the back playground as the lollipop boy, we encounter our first obstruction in the form of one of these undiscovered areas, a cold, lifeless looking stone building consisting of three stories, no ground level windows and a locked back door. An array of crumpled ladders and metalworks on the ground suggesting that there was once a functional fire exit leading down from the roof which has fallen into catastrophic disrepair and has partially collapsed. There is however a system of pulleys made of strung together pillowcases and sheets, tangled in which we can spot several miscellaneous items including chairs, a radio, toys and maybe some dangerous tools and the like. Evidently, the bullies have been using this system to transport contraband items up to the roof for a reason we soon discover upon climbing one of the pulleys. LB arrives on the roof to discover what appears to be a secret hideaway on top of the building, chairs arranged in a circle around a burned trash can and other assorted foodstuffs littering the rooftop. There's a protruding doorway on the far side of the rooftop, clearly the main fire exit which now seems to be missing its door, which is now being used as a ramp by our first enemy encounter of the game. Circling the fire exit doorway is a female bully on a tricycle, going down the ramp and around the protruding fire exit structure. The time it takes her to circle the building is just enough for LB to drag a rake or other obstructive item to the bottom of the ramp and then hide. 
The bully will continue her usual route, eventually speeding down the ramp, hitting the rake and tumbling off the tricycle and slip off the rooftop, barely hanging on as a short cutscene starts during which LB kicks her to her demise. We then have the option to throw the tricycle along with various other objects off the roof. Doing so could even land you a trophy. Moving on, we can now head through the fire exit on the roof and make our way down the staircase and navigate our way through the hallways of what is evidently a sports hall. I imagine this area to have a dull greenish hue to it. I thought this could be an interesting area to cover, seeing as how physical education is often a part of school that a lot of people, myself included, <clears throat> didn't particularly enjoy. And we didn't get to see it in the full game. It could also hold some pretty negative memories for our pot belly bully basher. But anyway, this place, given the nature of a school sporting facility, is likely to contain apparatus and equipment such as trampolines, climbing frames, and other stuff. I imagine the place containing a few bullies who are clearly misusing this equipment and presenting us with opportunities. Such as a pair of bullies fighting for a place atop a climbing frame only to both be knocked off when we start climbing. Or a bully sitting on the edge of a trampoline who we can catapult off and have them smash on the ground when we sneak down from a gymnastic horse and jump on the trampoline behind them. After making our way towards the exit, we come to the entrance of the sports hall, which is a small area consisting of the coach's office and a lost and found. The coach could be nothing more than an obscured shadow at this point, quite clearly sleeping on the job, allowing us to sneak through his small office to the lost property or confiscated items box to retrieve a large spiral lollipop, resulting in another achievement. We then head out of the office, receiving a minor jump scare from the stirring coach as he snores and splutters from his chair before getting up and locking us in the room with him forcing us to exit through a vent, which requires us to pull it open with a rusty squeak. We navigate the vent and pass through into an extension of the sports hall area, which is lined with lockers, and some of the games rooms have been rearranged to contain tables and chairs for end of term exams. Lollipop Boy, now armed with his signature weapon, will need to skillfully battle his way through these areas, cracking bullies heads as they attack and using obstructions in the rooms to manage more than one bully at a time. After successfully circling our way through the locker room, we end up back outside the coach's office, his door now locked and the main exit now accessible. We head out of the sports hall and across a grassy field. Another area which we don't get to see in game but we have hints at its existence through the comic depictions and through the school's windows. We head on past the cracked bully on the ground, triggering another short cutscene during which LB rolls the bully over with his foot, ensuring that she is indeed dead before a musical sting kicks in and the teacher's footsteps can be heard coming right for us. So we book it, lollipop in hand to a more familiar side of the school squeezing our way into the open doors of the east wing and ending up coming in through the side door to an almost familiar hallway. The hallway behind this door. Moving along the hallway, we make our way through the double doors to find the cafeteria, disgusting as always, but unoccupied and slightly more organised than when Mono passes through. With no bullies in sight, we proceed getting to a certain point when a sudden crash interrupts us and the lunch lady comes barreling into frame, greedily helping herself to some of the food laid out on the tables which we would need to take refuge under until she moves on. Our unpleasant new assailant is frantically trying to prepare the mess hall for the bully's lunch break, pushing back and forth through the hall and making a mess as she goes. However, our gluttonous lunch lady simply can't stand waste, picking up any scrap of food left on the ground and immediately eating it. LB could climb one of the tray trolleys to retrieve a sausage or some other food item and toss it over the counter to distract the lunch lady before running. Eventually making our way through the dinner hall and into the storeroom, 
where we find objects from the science lab. The layout slightly different from when Mono visited this area, and a slightly different climbing puzzle in place to retrieve a small brown bottle, which will be kept on our person as a permanent item. We will then need to sneak our way back across the mess hall as the vent Mono used to continue is inaccessible in this scenario, forcing us to double back and once again avoid the lunch lady. Unfortunately for our portly little bully basher, the lunch lady has now taken to standing right by the only exit to the cafeteria and will always be in a position to capture us should we get her attention so distracting her with more food seems to be the only option. Only this time, we would climb yet another tray tower and our lollipop boy would interact with a pie sitting right on top of it, dumping the contents of his small brown bottle inside the grim looking pastry. We would then push the pie from the tower, letting it smash onto the floor, which would of course attract the lunch lady who would crouch down, scooping up the contents with her hands and ravenously consuming them. This gives us a chance to hop onto her back and make a run for the double doors that we came in through, exiting through the open left hand doorway with the lunch lady now in pursuit. As she thunders through the hallways with reckless abandon, we notice that she seems to be choking, crashing into walls and knocking over tray towers, leaving them in the position we find them in as mono as she clutches at her throat and she charges after us chasing us down the steps and clumsily falling into the doors of the freezer room, causing LB to hug the wall closest to the screen as she tumbles headfirst into the garbage and tips it over, twitching and moaning before slowly dying where we find her in the main game. A calmer music then takes over and another achievement pops up on screen. We then head out of the room to the sound of bullies filing into the mess hall, and crouch behind the tray tower until they pass, heading up the stairs and out of the now open door, through the room with the large clock and stairwell and into the library, where we will detour, taking the path the teacher walks instead of climbing on the columns of books. We exit into a long hallway lined with lockers, all of which are closed apart from one, which we can jump inside as the clumsy footfalls of the teacher draw nearer. If we arrive at the locker before being spotted, it will trigger a cutscene during which the teacher regards the lockers briefly before finding Lollipop Boy, throwing the locker open with her neck stretched awkwardly before fading to black. As a very last close to the game, and a precursor of things to come, it might be interesting to have the screen fade to black with the lollipop boy sitting in a dark hallway on a long bench alone. Suddenly, a large door with a familiar eye embossed on it creaks open to reveal a very dark room. We get up and walk inside only for the lights to flicker, revealing the principal. Sitting in his chair as depicted, tentacles writhing above his head, as our startled boy drops his lollipop and the tentacles rapidly extend downwards, taking him in their grasp before the lights cut out once more and we fade to credits. It could also be insinuated that the principal is responsible for turning the children into living porcelain dolls through this process, but that's something for you guys to consider. So that pretty much wraps up this pitch guys, but there's a couple of other little things that I'd like to address with you guys before you go. First of all, if you've made it this far and you have enjoyed this video, please let me know by dropping a like on there and dropping me a comment in the section below. And also consider subscribing if you haven't already, because I will be doing more of these moving forwards if you guys enjoyed it. The other thing is I would like to apologise to you guys for the long wait on this video and also for my presentation or lack thereof in this video as well. I'm still kind of sick. Which brings me to my next point. After letting you guys know that I was sick, I received a lot of love in the comments section hoping that I get better and wishing me well and I just wanted to thank you guys for that. It really did help me get through a tough time and I just wanted you to know that I am grateful, I am recovering and we're back to work. By the time you see this video, there is a good chance I'll already be working on part two. Speaking of which, the reason I started with the school is because, number one, it's my favourite area. 
and of all the DLCs that we should have got in Little Nightmares 2, this was the one I was looking forward to the most. And also I wanted to enjoy making the video, because obviously I could put this out and you guys could hate it, and if you hate it, I'm not going to make the rest of them, so... <laughs> Anyway, that's enough of me rambling because you guys are going to catch up with me before long anyway. But until then, that's game over. Bye.